The MIT Enterprise Forum of Texas, in association with Houston Public Media, presents Shale Gas Fracking, Sustainable New Energy Paradigm, brought to you by American Gas Association, committed to the safe delivery of clean natural gas to more than 65 million homes and businesses. Also sponsored by Oil & Gas Journal and Ensley Properties. Good evening. My name is Dave Hansen. I'm the chairman of the MIT Enterprise Forum of Texas. I'd like to welcome you all here tonight to hear a very informative program. We've organized a panel of experts who are fantastic and I think will do a great job of telling you about the history, the technology, and the debate about shale gas fracking. Before we get into our program tonight, I'd like to spend a couple of minutes talking about the MIT Enterprise Forum and also our sponsors, because our sponsors are, make it possible to put on programs like this. The MIT Enterprise Forum here in Houston was first formed in 1984. We're one of 28 worldwide chapters. Let's see. We're one of 28 worldwide chapters, um, with 11 being overseas. We're, the, we're associated with the MIT and the Technology Review Magazine in Cambridge, uh, Massachusetts. Our charter is to promote entrepreneurship, technology entrepreneurship, and to put on good programs, great programs, like you're going to see here tonight, that will talk about entrepreneurship, technology, and economics. We do this by having flagship programs, new venture clinics, and networking socials. I'll talk to you a little bit later about the uh, flagship programs. The new venture clinics are where we bring in startup companies to talk about their business and give a presentation to a panel of business experts. After a question and answer period, and we have the experts give them a feedback and summary about their presentation and advice and what they can do to make it better, talking about their strategies and also their marketing approaches. The uh, People who attend this, uh, the New Venture Clinics usually have a fantastic time and get very good feedback. Um, the networking socials are something that we have three times a year. Our next networking social is going to be on October 11th at uh, Damien's on Smith Street, and we hope to see you there. Let me talk a little bit about past programs. Uh, the flagship uh, programs that we have in New Venture Clinic are the hallmark of uh, what we do in the Enterprise Forum. In the last six months, we've had programs on uh, medical robotics, new advances in medical robotics with the Methodist Hospital. Uh, we've had uh, the MIT uh, View from the Top with the MIT Alumni Club, and that's where we had MIT alums who are uh, CEOs and CIOs of their organizations here in Houston talk about their companies and their perspectives on what's happening in the business environment. We also had John Hoffmeister talk about energy and energy policy back in February. Coming up in the future, we have uh, flagship programs talking about the business forecast for the 2013 uh, business year. You know, we have an economist from uh, the Federal Reserve as well as uh, Compass Bank who will give you great insight as to what's ha going to happen. Uh, we, uh, in November, we have a program coming up with uh, Norwegian Transatlantic uh, Council uh, talking about uh, collaborative research and education and the challenges of uh, collaborating tech tra technology transfer and also uh, commercialization. This is in combination with Rice and MD Anderson, and it's, uh, it's going to be a great week, and we're one of the programs that's part of that. Also coming up in the future, we have programs that we're planning on cancer, cancer research, and new uh, cancer therapies. We're looking at uh, making a program in stem cell research and the commercialization of stem cell uh, research, and we're hoping to uh, get a program and form a program on the exploration of Mars, and particularly the uh, the new rover that's up there on Mars and some of the latest advances. Let me talk a little bit about our sponsors. The event sponsors for tonight, uh, we, I can't say enough about 
sponsorship because it's import very important to us. We could not put on programs like this without our sponsors. And tonight we have the American Gas Association, um, Ensley Properties, and the Oil and Gas Journal who've uh, sponsored our program. Uh, Chris McGill from the American uh, Gas Association could not be here tonight. Uh, he's in Washington, D.C. But we have Linda uh, Ensley and Jim, uh, or actually Bob uh, Tippy taking uh, Jim's place, who will be uh, saying a couple of words about being a sponsor here for the MIT Enterprise Forum. So, Linda, would you come up and say a couple of words? Thank you for inviting us tonight. We appreciate it. Uh, Inslee Properties, Inc., EPI, as a lot of people know us, uh, provide land services to clients all over the country. Uh, we provide uh, landman on a contract basis. Uh, just to tell you a little bit about a landman, we do a lot of research. Um, we do negotiations. Uh, sometimes we draw maps. Sometimes we are a mathematician and calculate interest. Um, but we're a big part of the oil and gas process. Tonight is going to be very interesting to all of us because the landman these days are critical to the new technology and all of the different changes that have happened in, in the new technology. For example, we used to drill directional holes and we'd uh, go out and, and purchase a 40-acre lease and run title on 40 acres. Now we're talking about thousands of acres in order to drill one well. So what that does is that uh, creates a great deal of demand for landman and in our business. Uh, EPI is certainly one of the premier land service companies. We're proud to say we've been in business for 20 years now, ce celebrating our 20th year. Uh, we hope that we supply some of the best and uh, most valued contractors and landman to our clients. Uh, we also provide a temp to perm as well as do recruiting for folks in the oil and gas industry. Um, the well wouldn't be drilled if the landman wasn't negotiating the deal. Uh, we do appreciate being involved tonight, and we look forward to hearing what our expert panel has to say. Thank you. Bob, would you please come up? Oil and Gas Journal has been writing about exploration and development, drilling production, pipelines, refining, gas processing since 1902. And no, I haven't been on the staff quite that long. <laughs> that perspective gives us uh, a, a solid basis from which to appreciate statements like people are now producing from the source rock. Uh, it gives us a perspective to appreciate how strategy in the oil and gas industry has changed, uh, where the emphasis is diminishingly, uh, diminishingly on finding the reservoir and increasingly on figuring out the reservoir. And it also gives us the perspective to appreciate the tremendous supply potential uh, that becomes real when we make incremental steps in technology and low-quality re uh, low reservoirs and get exponential growth in recoverable volumes of hydrocarbons. Uh, this is truly an important subject, and just as important is that the industry uh, pursue the prize uh, with safety and environmental responsibility. Because we recognize uh, how tremendously uh, changing this is on the industry and on the, su the supply potential of the United States and the importance of, of, of realizing that, that potential responsibly. The journal was eager to, to uh, sponsor this event, uh, and especially so when we saw the quality of the speakers. We're very happy to be here. Thank you. Thank you very much, Linda and Bob. Uh, I can't say enough how, much, how important sponsors are to us. So I want to really thank our event sponsors for uh, allowing us to put this program on at Channel 8. I'd also like to take a minute, too, and just talk about our annual sponsors because they also play a very important part in helping us put together programs throughout the year. Um, our main, our biggest uh, sponsor, our leading sponsor, is uh, Westlake uh, Chemical, and uh, James Chow should be here tonight uh, representing uh, uh, Westlake Chemical. He's an MIT grad, and... Uh, 
has been a sponsor uh, for about three years now, and we really appreciate that. Mark Montgomery is here from uh, BBVA Compass Bank. Uh, he's president, and uh, Compass Bank has also been a sponsor of the MIT Enterprise Forum as a platinum sponsor uh, for uh, three years now as well. Uh, Farnsworth and Von Berg, attorneys at law. Uh, tonight, uh, Fran Von Berg and uh, Brooke Farnsworth uh, are here. Fran is also our vice chairman uh, in the MIT Enterprise Forum, and we appreciate not only her sponsorship, but all the work that she's done as a volunteer to help the organization be successful. Uh, on our gold sponsor list uh, from uh, Bank of Texas, Pat Green is here. Pat is also on our new Venture Clinic Advisory Board and helps uh, new startup companies. Uh, from the Bank of River Oaks, we have Ed Lowe and uh, Robert Rainey who are here tonight, and we thank them for uh, coming and being a sponsor. Uh, Brandit, uh, Tad Grow is here uh, representing uh, Brandit. Uh, Brandit uh, puts together the uh, graphics and the taglines for a lot of our announcements. So if you like what you see there, I would suggest that you uh, see Tad. Joe Guyman uh, is also one of our sponsors, and he's also our photographer here tonight. So you've probably seen him around uh, clicking pictures. From uh, the or from the Houston Technology Center, we have Marianne Maldonado, who's the vice president there, representing them. And I would like to say that the Houston Technology Center has been a very good supporter of the MIT Enterprise Forum. We hold all our new venture clinics there. We've held some flagships, and we really appreciate what the Houston Technology Center has done in uh, working with us and supporting us. Uh, and then from the Houston Con Chronicle, we have uh, Roberta Coalition. Uh, She's representing uh, the Chronicle. She's also an MIT alum, and she was part of the MIT View from the Top panel uh, that we had earlier this spring. So I want to thank all of our sponsors uh, and uh, companies that support us. Again, we could not do it without you. All right, I think we're about ready to start our program, and um, I'd first like to uh, introduce Niall Henderson who's our program chairman, and put together this fantastic panel of experts. And I think that as you looked over their resumes, you will be very impressed by what they've done in the past and the knowledge that they bring to this program. So, Niall. Thank you very much, David. Um, I, I'm very honored to uh, be the program chair for the MIT Enterprise Forum. Uh, as you've heard from David, one of our primary missions is to host uh, topics of interest to the local community. Uh, and I think everyone would agree that there's few topics currently that are of more interest to, uh, to North America than the development of uh, natural gas and shale gas. So uh, as I think uh, is widely recognized, it's one of the biggest developments in the energy industry for, for many decades. Uh, it has a lot of potential to transform uh, US energy security. But equally, it has also raised quite a few areas of concern. <coughs> so we look forward to a very interesting and informative debate this evening. And uh, I'm delighted that we've got such a uh, revered panel of experts here to, to talk us through the issues. <coughs> In particular, I'm delighted to introduce uh, David Blackman as our moderator for this evening. Uh, David is currently the Managing Director for FTI Strategic Communications. Uh, and over the course of uh, a 33-year career in the oil and gas industry, he's held various roles, uh, most latterly as Director of Government Affairs at El Paso, uh, Director of um, External Communications at Shell, ENP, um, and Corporate Affairs, uh, Vice President of Corporate Affairs at Burlington Resources. Um, David has also served a, as the Texas State Lead for the America's uh, Natural Gas Alliance. Um, he's been access, chaired the Access and Environmental Subcommittee for the National Petroleum Council's 2003 North America Natural Gas Study. So uh, we're very honored to have David here, and uh, David, look forward to the debate. Thank you very much. I, I really appreciate being here. This is an extraordinarily high-quality panel, and uh, I'm honored to be invited to be the moderator. I'm going to introduce each of the speakers in order right now, so bear with me for a few minutes, and then we'll have them move to the podium to give their presentations to you. Uh, first, to my left, uh, providing a perspective from upstream producers is Mark Bowling. Mark is the vice president, or I'm sorry, the president of V Plus Development Solutions and general counsel for Southwestern Energy. V Plus Development Solutions' mission is to develop solutions to the challenges of unconventional resource development, 
that strike a balance between the environment, social, and economic impacts. Prior to joining Southwestern in 2002, Mark worked in private practice for many years as a partner at Fulbright and Jaworski. Mark was recently appointed by New York Governor a Andrew Cuomo to serve on the New York Advisory Panel on High Volume Hydraulic Fracturing and participated in preparation of the Atlantic Council Report on European, European Unconventional Gas Development. In recent times, Mark has helped lead an effort with, along with EDF, the Environmental Defense Fund, and other environmental NGOs to develop a model regulatory framework for hydraulic fracturing operations. Mark is a member of the American, Arkansas, and Texas Bar Associations and is a regular speaker on a variety of topics relating to development of unconventional resources. Mark, thank you for being here. My pleasure. Professor Dan Hill is the holder of the Noble Endowed Chair and Interim Head of the Petroleum Engineering Department at Texas A&M University. Previously, he taught for 22 years at the University of Texas at Austin after five years in the oil and gas industry. Professor Hill is the author of the SPE monograph, Production Logging, Theoretical and Interpretive Elements, co-author of the textbook, Petroleum Production Systems, co-author of an SPE book, Multilateral Wells, and author of over 150 technical papers and five patents. He has been an SPE Distinguished Lecturer and was named a Distinguished Member of the SPE in 1999 and received the SPE Production and Operations Awards in 2008. Professor Hill currently serves on the SPE Editorial Review Committee and is the Chairman of the SPE Hydraulic Fracturing Technology Conference. Professor Hill, thank you for being here. Jim Marston is the Founding Director of the Texas Office of the Environmental Defense Fund, EDF, located in Austin where he has served since its beginning in 1988. Jim is the Vice President of EDF's National Energy Program and also serves as Regional Director of EDF's Texas Office. Jim has advocated for some of the most innovative state, innovative state legislation in the country, <coughs> including the Texas Renewable Portfolio st Standard that led to almost 10,000 megawatts of new wind energy in Texas, by far the most in the country of any state. He is the leader of the Pecan Street Project, a partnership that includes Austin Energy, the University of Texas, the Chamber of Commerce, and several clean tech companies aimed at making fundamental changes in the nation's electricity grid. From 2002 to 2009, Jim was EDF's State Climate Initiatives Director and was instr instrumental in helping, helping the introduction of a, of a wide range of legislation and regulations to reduce the emission of greenhouse gases, including the passage of the California Car Greenhouse Gas Standards in 2002 that ultimately led to national greenhouse gas standards for automobiles in 2010 and the passage of AB 32 in 2006. Jim, thank you very much for being here. Mike Watts is the Director of Fracture Stimulation Affairs within the Production Enhancement Service line of Halliburton Energy Services. In his 30-year career with Halliburton, Mike has served as VP of Business Development for Halliburton's Red Technology Alliance, Director of Strategic Sourcing, Country Manager for Russia, and Integrated Solutions Manager for Latin America. Mike's experience includes 10 years in field operations. Mike is a member of the Society of Petroleum Engineers and holds a Bachelor of Science degree in Civil Engineering from Auburn University in Alabama. Mike, thank you. And David Nestlin, our final panelist, is currently a partner at Davis Graham and Stubbs Law Firm in Denver. For the past four years, he served as director of the Colorado Oil and Gas Conservation Commission. During his tenure, a history-making tenure, the commission worked to balance energy production with environmental protection by undertaking the first comprehensive updating of its regulations in more than a decade, issuing a record number of drilling permits, implementing new environmental requirements, collaborating with local governments, and adopting a set of hydraulic fracturing regulations that are considered a national model today. David served as chair of the State Review of Oil and Natural Gas Environmental Regulations, Inc., a multi-stakeholder organization that conducts peer reviews of state environmental programs and as Colorado's representative on the Interstate Oil and Gas Compact Commission, a multi-state agency that provides leadership on U.S. oil and gas issues. David also assisted the Groundwater Protection Council in developing and promoting the hydraulic fracturing website 
fracfocus.org. David has testified before Congress and frequently speaks on hydraulic fracturing and other energy related topics. Before joining the state, David spent 24 years with the law firm of Arnold and Porter, where, he pra where his practice focused on environmental law and public land. David, thank you very much for being here. Let's have a round of applause for our panelists. With that, Mark, I'll turn it over to you. Thank you.